I want to ask, because it was a pretty controversial topic last week. Did you see the wrestling observer awards that came out? Did you hear about those? I did not. Let's run through a few. The wrestler of the year, which is known as the Ric Flair award. John Moxley comes in at number one, Roman reigns at number two, will Osprey at number three and Okada at number four. What do you think of that? John Moxley wrestler of the year last year. Well, I think he's done a hell of a job, but I, I, um, this is certainly nothing against John, but I don't see how you go against Roman. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm, I'm, I guess because she had some time off, but, um, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm stuck on this. I think Ashley's the best worker in the business. And I know that I'm, I know that she took most of the year uh, off though, in fairness. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm saying, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, it, it, I, if she stays uh, healthy all year long this year and they don't give it to her, there's something wrong. <laughs> Tag team of the year. It was a runaway FTR. Uh, got a ton of votes. They're number one, Mark and Jay Briscoe. Of course, we just recently lost Jay. They came in at number two, young bucks at three Usos at four FTR last year. I, I believe only had 16 or, or six televised tag matches last year. The but best tag team in the business right now is the Usos. Really? Absolutely. Okay. If you factor in size, which they're both 240. They're not two five, not two ten, not two eight. They're two forty. They can do anything athletically. They're fearless. I just, I'm, I'm really stuck. I, I mean, I, I love FCR. I, I, this is not a. <clears throat> once again, I've always got to qualify because people get their feelings hurt. But I mean, how do you not go with Roman Reigns, even though I love John? Right. Because Roman has just done so damn much for the business. I mean. And how do you not go with, uh, with the Usos? I mean, that, that's been a year long angle that has really paid off. Well, I think, uh, and I know you didn't have a chance to see it, but one day I want to sit down and watch the FTR Briscoe's dog collar match. It's Mm -hmm. unbelievable. I, I really want you to see it. I think that might sway your opinion, but I hear you. I think a few years ago, we all thought, man, FTR versus the young bucks. That's a dream match. Now it almost feels like it's gone the other way. It's FTR and the Usos. I would agree with you. They're probably one A and one B in tag teams right now. Well, let me tell you something. When when FTR was with WWE, yeah. those matches were incredible. Yes, incredible. They're, they're totally an iron. Yes, they are. And then and the Usos. One, you just got to factor in. They're so damn big. They're big kids, and they're and they're, they're two hundred and forty pounds both of them. And that, to me, that factors a lot in what they do in the ring because you get in, they can do the splashes, they can jump through tables, they stay relatively healthy. I mean, I, I just, I have a hard time getting around the Usos uh, um, and right now. So, but, but I mean, that, that, just to even mention in that and the fact that the fans respect them that much and that uh, that award has been going on so long. And believe me or not, believe me, it does mean something to these kids to get that award. Yes. That's the most important thing is the marks out there or the fans out there that think us is all bullshit. It means a lot to them. It's not a payday, but to to win a Dave Meltzer award or any of these, any of these, I mean, it meant a lot. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't realize it till people are talking about later on. And what did I get? Six or seven of them or something like that. I can't even remember, but. Uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but people still talk about it today. So it means something. You won it in, uh, 1983, 1984, 1985, 1986, 1997, 1990, 1991, and 1993. So you won it eight times, eight times. Why? Hell no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's some pretty stiff competition back then too. No doubt. The uh, best on interviews award went to MJF and it wasn't even close. This is his second time winning it. That puts him up there with guys like Roddy Piper and Jim Cornette and yourself and Stone Cold and The Rock. What did you think? MJF have the best promos last year? Um, um, 
think so. I, I'd, have, I'd have to say, yeah, I can't think of anybody had better ones. No, I don't. I like, yeah, he brings a lot of energy, and he, um, yeah, I, I, I like his whole presentation. I mean, interviews, it's not just what comes out of your mouth, it's the way you present it. Does that make sense? Yes. It, it's the, 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 the canter, the demeanor, the arrogance. I mean, there's a lot more than just what comes out of your mouth. And yes, he's very good. Very good. Promotion of the year, and this became uh, somewhat controversial. All Elite Wrestling came in first place. Stardom came in second place. WWE came in third place. New Japan Pro Wrestling in fourth, and the UFC in fifth. I don't know about that one. I love me some Tony Khan and AEW, but promotion of the year and stardom. How does that beat WWE? I I don't possibly know how. I mean, I mean first of all, it's not... Th those guys just that aforementioned card you just did for AEW is as good a card, yes, uh, as 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 a as WWE has, with the exception of a few people. Um, but you just can't. I don't know how anybody can put anything ahead of the WWE. I I I talked to Tony during my birthday. It was great. I felt one of the things I felt good about is I'm on a good. I'm in a good place with both companies which proves this factor that was really important. Tony, if, 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 you're critical, if you're critical of something and you do it, and you but you point out the reasons why you're saying it, this fact of it, where people are thinking that Tony is sensitive or Hunter is sensitive and that, it's bullshit. It's the way you present it. Right. I mean, and who it, it's who's saying it. So if somebody is saying it that actually knows the business and has paid the price, to be in it and be successful, they don't mind be, being critical. And I, I, and all I said was last week, and it, it got all kinds of press. I thought I was hoping I didn't piss off Tony, but when I read it, what I said was he invested in football. He's got a soccer team, yeah, and it doesn't hurt to step back, right? And obviously, it didn't piss him off. So because he texted me on my birthday, and, and it just Hunter did. I mean, I'm, I'm in a good place, and it's. That's all I want to do. I want to be happy. And, and I think the kids know that I, I'm just giving my opinion. It doesn't mean it's right, but it's, it's an, an opinion that comes from experience. Whereas I can name 35 or 40 people that say things that they don't even have the right to talk about because they don't know. Right. And they haven't been near the locker room and they haven't been near the town. Does that make sense? Yes. And so they're just shooting from, from, and then they're, they're going to say something that's hurtful. And, and it, it just, I'm, I'm, I got what you and I, I think we accomplish in our, in our format is we, we speak the truth. There's nobody more knowledgeable that's not a wrestler, in my opinion, than you. And I, and I, and I've met a lot of people that have followed the business. But you, I mean, I, I think you know it as well as Dave does. Um, because you've been watching it for years, you loved it, <clears throat> and you've met uh, so many of the components personally. Yeah. So you, well, you know the that. inner workings of it. So, yeah, I, 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 I'm just happy to say that people, people are, are, are I think like our podcast because we are, you know, we're fair and we're just giving our opinion. It's not to hurt anybody, you know, and it's not. Anytime you say someone's better, then you say, "Well, God." But what about is, so yeah yeah but but it, it's the truth it's the, not everybody can be number one that's true not everyone can be number two and if you're in the top five you're damn lucky yeah and if you're in the top 10 you're even luckier <laughs> you know what i mean so and yeah i think that's why you and i could run the show and that's why hopefully people enjoy listening to it well, they do. And, and I appreciate that people enjoy watching dynamite. It won best weekly TV show. I would probably agree with that on the whole, when it came to the United States, Canadian MVP mm -hmm. in, in order, it was John Moxley, Roman Reigns, Chris Jericho, MJF, and Brian Danielson. I got to think Moxley as the rumor goes, had some scheduled off time planned. And then when everything happened with CM Punk and the bucks or whatever that was, they decided, Hey, can you stick around? And he did. He really did help carry a W last year. John. Oh, he, ab absolutely. God, I, I'm, a, I, I'm not saying that cause I, 
close to him and Renee, but I am. I'm, but I mean, <clears throat> like I said, I, I think Renee's a big component of the show now too. But it's just you're talking about a company that's been in existence for three years, as opposed to to, to WWE. So it just you know it doesn't happen overnight, right? But there's, it's it's certainly not because of lack of talent or effort, and that's the key word. The kids work just as hard. Just because I don't know all of them, uh, because I'm the, I'm not the, around the AEW locker room, doesn't mean I don't respect them. I respect them all. MJF won most charismatic. Brian Danielson won the Brian Danielson Award. That's not a joke, but uh, my man has won that technical wrestling. And that's what it is. It's a best technical wrestler award. He won it in 06, in 07, in 08, in 9, in 10, in 11, in 12, in 13, in 14. And now, of course, he's won it in 2021 and 2022. Uh, Moxley won the best brawler award, which is the Bruiser Brody Award. Uh, most overrated. This is one you may have an opinion on Ronda Rousey. In your opinion, is Ronda Rousey overrated? Um, well, my response to that would be Ronda Rousey is a world-class athlete, but she hasn't wrestled enough to, 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 to be considered the greatest wrestler. Does that make sense? Yes. If, if she had been, if she had trained to wrestle as long as she trained for MMA, she'd be one of the all-time greats, but she is one of the greatest athletes in, in the history of the female division. I'll, I'll leave it at that. And, I think that's and, and, and a very charming, nice young lady that is tougher than tougher than shit, but it, you know, it goes out there and makes it happen for everybody. The rookie of the year award goes to Rick Steiner's son, Braun breaker. No argument for me. None for me either. Uh, I, can't, I, I can't believe he's not in the main roster yet. You got to think after mania, he's coming up, right? Every time, every time I see, um, every time I see uh Rick, I go, what the hell? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> Cause he's been there a while. I, I, you know, sometimes when he's such an integral part of the show, they don't want to let him go. That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm, 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 I'm assuming they're taking care of him financially. Oh, you got to assume. Yeah. 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 Because uh, uh, Tony would pay him a fortune. Well, I don't think we got to worry about that. I think WWE is going to open up the checkbook. No, no, no. I'm just saying if he didn't, I'm sure, yeah, yeah, Tony, for sure. Tony would jump on him in a second. The best non-wrestler award went to Paul Heyman. No argument for me. He has helped level up Roman in a way that is hard to beat. The best award, what award is that? Non-wrestler. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the worst television announcer. I want your take on this. It's, uh. Corey Graves wins the worst announcer award. Booker T comes in second. Jim Ross comes in third. I don't know about that. Maybe I'm in the minority. Clearly, I guess I am. I like Corey Graves. I think he does a great job. I think it's fantastic. I can yeah. tell you the worst announcer is, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Corey Graves is fantastic. And Jim Ross, whether I'm getting along with Jim or not, Jim Ross is a hell of an announcer. No doubt. Yeah. I mean, that's my personal feelings for Jim and I. We, we go back and forth over stupid stuff, but it's hard to ever factor Ross out. And I'll be honest with you. I think Shivani does a hell of a job. He is crushing it. Yeah. I mean, I, so I don't know why that, 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 that award right there. That's just people. Are, negative. It's what? It's a negative bullshit. It's negative. Yeah. So now here's something else. That's a little negative. Rick, the worst major wrestling show. The readers of the wrestling observer voted that last year's Royal rumble, not the one last month, but last year in St. Louis, that was the worst major wrestling show. The second worst major wrestling show was the elimination chamber over in Saudi Arabia last February. The third worst wrestling show was GCW's the world in January in New York last year. And in fourth place, the worst major wrestling show, according to the readers of the Wrestling Observer, Ric Flair's last match. We took we took fourth. We took fourth in the worst major wrestling show. That's good, <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, let's keep the hits going. They also have a, a little topic they vote on over in the Observer. Award. No, but that. 
That means we're not the first worst. We're not the first worst. <laughs> not uh, even the second or third. Not even I'll, second. I'll take that. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. The most disgusting promotional tactic. Number one was WWE Vince McMahon appearing on television for a crowd pop after sexual misconduct allegations. That was number one. Number two, WWE continuing the relationship with Saudi Arabia. And number three, the most disgusting promotional tactic, Ric Flair's last match. Well, I don't pay attention to that. <laughs> you, know what I, you know what I got to say to that? What's that? I made $300,000. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> That's right. I made $300,000. Disgusting you. Yeah. <laughs> Disgust yourself for 300 grand. Worst match of the year. And, and, and get in a shape that I got in. How about that, motherfuckers? That's 73, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, worst match of the year Pat McAfee versus Vince McMahon, Arlington, Texas. The second worst match of the year Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal against Ric Flair and Andrade in Nashville. Second worst, Rick. Come on uh, now. Uh, I'll, I'll take that because it was a shit. <laughs> <laughs> there but were it, worse it, matches it, last year. My but, God. No, no, no. But here's the deal. It, it was a shit because I made a mistake in uh, hydrating. Let right. me have, let me have it again. G give oh, me, will you stop? No, I'm, no, I mean, I'm serious. I think about it all the time. Let me have the match again. Cause I, the one thing I never thought about was to keep myself hydrated, which I found out my doctor told me the other day, I just went to get my heart tested and all that. He said, the only thing wrong with you is, he said, <laughs> he's he, he, my new doctor here in Tampa. So he's reading my medical records. He goes, you drink nine to 12 beers a day. And the same, it's like the psychiatrist, right? From years ago. I said, yeah, I said, do you do that every day? He said, I'm looking at your blood work. And all I can tell you is that if you're going to keep drinking like that, you, you got to stay a little bit more hydrated. That's the only thing. So just drink more water with the, with the booze. Oh, my God. He, he goes, I assume you're not going to quit drinking. I said, you got that shit right. He said, just drink more water. So it's not that your alcohol ratio is too high. It's that the water is too low. Believe it or not, it, 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 the water affects the, the, the your, your kidneys. If you don't drink enough water, if you're drinking a lot of booze. Yeah. Because the nine beers, I didn't even tell them how much vodka I'm drinking every day. <laughs> I mean, come on. And and you, of all people, putting that phony blue shit in your vodka. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That, Hang on now. It. It's vodka water. I'm drinking water. And I'll never forget one of the first times me and you were hanging yeah, out. Yeah, vodka water. You're right. That's right. You, you need to drink more water. I'm I'm chugging water, dude. So no, no that, that's what I'm doing now, though. But you, my kidneys have been through a little more than yours. That's fair. <laughs> I mean, mine stopped. <laughs> my, my, mine in 2017, mine said, fuck you, Rick. We do not work anymore. You're dead. <laughs> I love you. For that. It's the fucking truth. Wendy, tell me I'd bring the goddamn special doctor down there to get my kidneys pumped up. Oh, my God. <laughs> come, uh, here. No, come here, Wendy. Yeah. This is great to get a podcast. Come here. We talked about the yoke with all you. Hello. Hi. So I guess I guess we're we're tagging you in for a kidney story. Yes, yeah, a kidney story, huh? No, we're at the hospital, and I told, oh, well, you know, they could pump in vodka and stuff. So, and they wanted to do that. I said, no, no, no. We need to get a new machine in here, and we need to fix his kidneys. Is that the story he wants me to tell you? Because that was what was happening. Oh, because I, they stopped. Yeah, yeah, his kidneys and the machine wasn't working. So we had to go get a new, a different machine, a brand new machine that hospitals didn't have. So I went to the staff. We, yeah, it was uh, very hard to convince them that we need this new machine here. Now the hospital has probably 10 of them, but it's because of Rick. So he's worn out stair, machine, stair masters and kidney machines? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All righty. That's it. That's his story. He's the it. Iron man. You know what? The Iron Man or the Bionic Man. I One told of those. Him One of those. Theme, his theme for next year's birthday is Bionic Man. I like that. I like that. 
Bye. Nice to see Wendy here on the program. A little running, a little hot tag. Conrad. So Wendy leaves now, right? Wendy lives here now pretty much. Like she's going back and forth. So last night at American Social, she said, I can't. <laughs> she said to me, I'm going home. I, I cannot drink every night with you. And so I'm drinking. I've drank all weekend. I can't. Now, now I get to stay at American Social by myself. <laughs> Wendy goes home and watches TV. <laughs> well, you do have your name literally on the bar. I can't believe it. <laughs> I know. I found a new place too. They're gonna to put my name on it. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> when he goes, when he goes, you enjoy. I'm going home. <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and drink with you <laughs> every goddamn night. I love it. <laughs> How good is that? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Let's do a few more uh, observer it's awards. The, it's the best of both worlds. <laughs> They got to put you on a leash or something down there. And we got the porn channel fixed too. <laughs> oh, well, how can we live without that? No, now I don't have to call you for room to number 280 in your private room downstairs. <laughs> it was 599, by the way. 599. <laughs> uh, worst promotion of the year, according to the Wrestling Observer WWE. Come on, man. Worst promotion of the year. They had their most top line revenue ever. They had their biggest profit ever. How are they the worst promotion of the year? That's just silly. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. But getting getting back to my last match. Yeah. Um, and that um, if the things that are surrounding it, if that what, what was that thing we did with ESPN? Give me the stat on that again. It was the uh, most viewed combat sports story of the year. It was on the front page for more than a day. Nobody else could claim that. Yeah. And didn't we also have the biggest crowd in the history of that building? It wasn't the biggest crowd, but I mean, it was the biggest in a while. I mean, WWE had ran it recently. AEW had ran it recently. We outdrew them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, all time. You guys sold it out for Starcades and nitros and all that. Okay. Like, okay. I don't remember. But you did out. Here's what's crazy. I think you did draw more than when it was you and flair and steamboat and funk that's where he gave you the pile driver on the table. Yeah, now, exactly. Yeah. I think we drew more for that. Yeah. There were more people for a one-off show than there were for you and yeah. Steamboat for the title back in. So, I'll take some of those. I'll take those accolades. <laughs> uh, best booker of the year. Tony Khan. That surprises me. I thought for sure. Triple H had it last year. I think Meltzer kind of agreed too. He even says, I usually don't comment on this. And for the six, first six months of the year, you can make the argument that WWE and AEW as businesses were in the same position with one much larger, but clear cut one and two in the world all year. However, it was WWE that grew all year while AEW did not do as well as in comparison over the last eight months. Tony Khan wins Booker of the Year again. Well, I can't, you know, the fans decide, but, you know, I, I think that, um, well, once again, I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, you know, you're just, it's just hard to compare WWE to AEW because of how long WWE has been around. Right. And it's, and it's just that big. So I don't know, but I mean, even though I think that he should look back sometimes, and, and because he, especially during football season, if nothing else, because he doesn't miss anything. You know that, right? Right. I mean, he, he, he does the stats for the game, for the football game. Yes. Yes. And he, and he goes to practice and, he, and, he, and I, and I wasn't saying, I was saying his closest to it is it, it, it's okay to be that close, but sometimes you need a fresh, food. but he takes a damn much pride in it. I, I got no problem with giving that to Tony because trust me, Hunter has a lot of help too. Oh, for sure. He's got a whole staff. I mean, Hunter's got me. I mean, let's talk about our buddy Bruce. I mean, yeah, he's got Hunter's got twenty guys, and and Tony probably has two. So yeah, give it to Tony. But you can't take anything away from Hunter either. No doubt. Promoter of the and, year. And, and, and once again, the fans do not dictate our business. And it's nice that they want to have a, a say in it, and we appreciate that. But they don't dictate the popularity contest. You know that we all yeah. do. Promoter of the year, also Tony Khan. Uh, Dana White came in second. Rosie Agawa came in third. Paul Levesque in fourth. Nick Khan in fifth. And all the way at the bottom, eighth is Vince McMahon. 
promoter by definition, in my opinion, means who drew the most money, whose business made the most money. Vince McMahon should have won that. It's not close, but Tony Khan did. Uh, and then best gimmick. I think you and I will both be aligned here. It was a blow away. Sammy Zayn. Oh, you got by far. Yeah. No yeah, doubt. I mean, no, I, you know, because one thing I said, and I told you that I, I think, I think what's going to be important now, and this is a very fair statement, is let's see how, how, um, Sammy does without being part of, uh, Roman's deal. Yes. That, that'll be the measure of, of, of his success. If he can maintain that momentum, where Kevin Owen has maintained momentum for like, five straight years now or something like that. Right. Yep. Kevin taking those crazy bumps and all that. Now let's see what, um, Sammy can do when he, without being part of the bloodline. That, that's, that's when you really find out if you're over or you're just, you had that, what we call fleeting fame. I can't wait to see what's next for that bloodline storyline. Of course, Cody Rhodes announced, uh, as we're recording this last night on Monday night raw, that Roman reigns is on SmackDown and this Friday. Cody Rhodes will be on SmackDown too. So I'm pretty pumped to see what happens there. Mm -hmm. Uh, And of course it's a big AEW pay-per-view weekend, but for the rest of the show, let's hit some questions. Uh, I jumped on Twitter last night and asked, Hey man, you guys got a question for the birthday boy. Let's hit him up. 